Please introduce Madam Dur Durga Malu Gudil, right? Hello fellow Rotarians, I'll just uh, be brief on Durga. She's all of 32 years. She's a polio survivor. Uh, she grew up begging on the roads and foraging for food. Uh, today she is in charge of 3 lakh people of her community which is called the Vaidu community. She doesn't have parents and she started her social activism career by abolishing child marriage in her community. Her own sister had been told to be married when she was a child and when she grew up she obviously didn't want to marry the person she was told to marry when she was a child and Durga and her sister stood up and there was a big uh, hangama, police had to be called, police even wanted money but finally they said we are not going to marry at the age of 15 or 16 where they were supposed to marry or her sister was supposed to marry. So she started her activism in abolishing child marriage in her community which is in Jogeshwari. This is Bombay, outskirts of Bombay that we are talking about. Her community of 3 lakh people is spread all over Maharashtra. She comes from Solapur but there are at least uh, 30,000 families even in the outskirts of Bombay where she resides. Uh, during pandemic, uh, they collected about 22 lakh rupees and they fed 6,500 people rations, uh, which they continue to do. And today with the support of RCB, uh, they have started adult literacy in their area and 100 families are getting ration. But uh, for, for the adult literacy, there are 300 adults uh, getting uh, tuitions or getting uh, taught. There are about 200 to 300 children who come regularly in this, uh, in this uh, school. So uh, I know uh, RCB has supported in our own little way. She has managed to get uh, many more uh, people. We have been associated, in fact my late father Sitaram Shah uh, got, got introduced to Durga and, uh, and uh, supported her and we find in her uh, in a young age of 33, she has taken it all by herself uh, to, to you know, make the change in her community and we wish her good luck and from all of us uh, today, I think the award will, will uh, carry on the message. So thank you and congratulations to you. Club of Bombay is pleased to honor Durga Malu Gudilu with the Uma Jain Young Women Achiever Award for rising from abysmal poverty to unite and fight for the nomadic and tribal Vaidu community, for founding the Ahum Foundation which has helped with the basic education, literacy and women's empowerment and the environment in general for working tirelessly to abolish child marriage and compulsory religious rights rituals for continuing and fo for the continued and focused support to the community during the pandemic signed <coughs> president rotarian shonas wakil rotary club of bombay 20 2021 20, 22 i think uh,
सभी को मेरा नमस्कार और यहाँ पे स्टेज पर बैठे हुए सभी मान्यवर और यहाँ पे इस प्रोग्राम में जो साथी है उनको भी मेरा नमस्कार एक्चुअली मुझे आज मम्मी की बहुत याद आ रही है क्योंकि मेरे हर अवार्ड में वो रहती थी आज नहीं है लेकिन आज जो भी मुझे अवार्ड मिला है वो मम्मी का है और ये मेरा 81 वन अवार्ड है जो मेरी मम्मी ने मुझे रेडी मुझे क्यों बनाया है वो मेरी मम्मी की देन है और मुझे याद है हम लोग रेशन बांट रहे थे और मेरी मम्मी गए साल कोरोना के टाइम पे गई और इस सिस्टम ने स्कूल कम बनाया और हॉस्पिटल्स कम बनाया और मेरी एक जिद है कि मैं अपने कम्युनिटी के लिए कोई हॉस्पिटल और स्कूल बनाऊँ क्योंकि मेरी मम्मी पापा कभी पढ़े लिखे नहीं थे लेकिन उन्होंने हम दोनों लड़कियों को पढ़ाया और मेरी सिस्टर फर्स्ट ग्रेजुएट है मेरे कम्युनिटी की और उन दोनों ने पढ़ाया इसलिए आज हम हमारे समाज को पढ़ाने का एक जिम्मा जिम्मेदारी और अपना कर्तव्य कर रहे हैं ज़िंदगी में अपने लिए सभी लोग जीते हैं और वो एक स्वार्थ हम कहते हैं लेकिन दूसरों के लिए काफ़ी कम लोग जीते हैं मुझे ऐसा लग रहा है भगवान ने शायद मुझे इसीलिए भेजा रहेगा कि मैं बहुत सारे दुर्गा बना सकूं मेरे कम्युनिटी में मैं नहीं सोचती मैं पूरे इंडिया को चेंज करूं लेकिन मैं जहाँ रहती हूँ जिस कम्युनिटी में रहती हूँ मेरा योगदान मेरा सरकार उसमें ज़रूर रहे और मेरी वैदु कम्युनिटी जो है वो नोमैटिक ट्रैवल्स में आती है जिसे फोर्टी टू कम्यूनिटीज़ आती है उसमें से एक है जो सिग्नल पे भीख मांगते हैं या रोड के नीचे रहते हैं मैं खुद भी रही हूँ मुझे याद है मैं भीख मांगना कब छोड़ी मेरा स्कूल फ्रेंड था और मुझे वो काफ़ी अच्छा लगता था और मैं भीख मांगते मांगते मैंने उसके ही घर पे जाके भीख मांगा उसने दरवाज़ा खोला और मुझे गिल्ट हुआ कि मैं मैं उसके घर पर भीख मांगी और उस तब से लेके आज तक मैं कभी भीख मांगने गई नहीं और मैंने समझ लिया कि हमें कुछ करना है और वो मतलब यहाँ पे नहीं करना है कुछ अलग करके दिखाना है और सीखते सीखते लोगों में समाज में काम करने लगी समाज में बहुत सारे इश्यूज आने लगे महिलाओं को दो हम स्थान समझा जा रहा था कास्ट पंचायत जिसे हम खाप पंचायत बोलते वो लोग साथ में भी बैठते नहीं है महिलाओं के अगर परचाई भी महिला की पड़ी तो ना के उस पंचायत में बैठते हैं तो ये सब गिल्ट मेरे दिमाग में आया और मुझे लगा ये चेंज करना चाहिए अगर हम अगर उठे नहीं तो सभी लोग सोए रहेंगे और मैं तभी ही मेरी सिस्टर का जो पैदा भी नहीं हुई उसकी शादी तय की गई और उसको उसने सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर बनी कम्यूनिटी की पहली लेकिन उसको शादी नहीं करना था तो हम लोगों को समाज के बाहर किया लेकिन मेरी पढ़ाई सबसे ज़्यादा मतलब मैं किसी चीज़ को मानती हूँ तो एजुकेशन है और तब से मैंने समझ लिया कि अगर हम पढ़ेंगे तो ही हम विरोध कर पाएंगे लड़ पाएंगे और आगे बढ़ पाएंगे और इसीलिए मैं आज भी अपने कम्युनिटी में एजुकेशन जो है वो लाना चाहती हूँ मुझे पता है मैं बहुत पैसा कमाने की तो लालच नहीं है मेरे में लेकिन जिस वक्त मैं नहीं रहूँगी मेरा इतिहास ज़रूर मेरे कम्यूनिटी के लोग लिखेंगे और और उसमें मेरा नाम होगा और आज जो परिस्थिति है वैदु कम्युनिटी की वो पाँच टक्के भी बच्चे पढ़े हुए नहीं हैं आज भी जो हिंसा है ड्रिंक करना पत्नियों को मारना तो ये सभी चीज़ें आज भी हो रही है लेकिन फट से चेंज नहीं आएगा वक्त लगेगा इन सभी को तो मुझे लगता है कि वो शायद हम कोशिश करेंगे तो ज़रूर आएगा मेरी मम्मी जाने के बाद दो Uh, मेरे लिए एंजल्स आए क्योंकि मैं बहुत डिप्रेशन में थी और वो एंजल्स यहाँ पे भी है क्योंकि मैं एक डिप्रेशन में जाने के बाद मुझे वहाँ से बाहर निकलना था क्योंकि मम्मी और मैं ही रहते थे घर में और मैंने uh, रोटरी क्लब से मेरी उनके ज़रिए पहचान हुई उन परिश्तों की वजह से और मैं उस डिप्रेशन से बाहर निकली सिर्फ एक काम जो है मैं अपने लिए भी कर रही हूँ समाज के लिए नहीं क्योंकि मुझे जो डिप्रेशन का सुकून जो है तो वो ये काम करके मिलता है 
और तभी आर से रोटरी क्लब से मेरी पहचान हुई शेरनाज मैम से आज हम मिले हैं लेकिन एक कनेक्टिविटी उनके साथ लग रहा है मुझे कि आर से कुछ कनेक्शन है मेरा और एक मैग्नेट है शायद हम मिलके और काम करेंगे और मुझे लगता है कि सभी लोगों ने हम इस दुनिया में आए हैं जो हम लेते हैं वो दीन देना भी सीखेंगे तो दो दुगना होता है और ये मेरी मम्मी भी बताई थी क्योंकि वो दोनों पढ़े लिखे नहीं थे लेकिन उनके विचार काफ़ी बड़े थे और अभी हम लोग मेरा सपना करके प्रोजेक्ट चलाते हैं बच्चों का और उसमें बच्चे काफ़ी जब मैं एंटर करती हूँ मेरे बस्ती में तो वो जो आवाज़ है बच्चों की कि दुर्गा दीदी दुर्गा दीदी तो वो वही खुशी है मेरे लिए बहुत सारा और उसी के साथ हम लोग एडल्ट लिटरेसी पे काम कर रहे हैं फिलहाल और महिलाओं को एजुकेशन मतलब उनको हिसाब नहीं समझ रहा है साइन अगर बैंक अकाउंट खोलने जा रहे तो उनको सिग्नेचर करने नहीं आ रहा है तो ये भी हमारा एडल लिटरेसी का आर के साथ चल रहा है और आर का जो सफ़र है वो हमारे साथ साथ रहेगा ऐसा मैं सोचती हूँ और शेरनाज मैम और आर और यहाँ पे सभी एकता मैम वंदन से सभी को मैं थैंक यू बोलती हूँ आप लोगों ने मेरे काम को एक आपने जो मुझे अवार्ड दिया है वो मेरी जब, मतलब जवाबदारी जो है वो और बढ़ जाएगी क्योंकि उस लायक मुझे और बनना है तो मतलब आपका अवार्ड मेरे पे और जवाबदारियों का ये बढ़ा रहा है और थैंक यू सो मच आप सभी के लिए थैंक यू सो मच I now request Rotarian Satya Nisrani to introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Imtiaz Anis. Thank you, Shani. Durga ji, congratulations. <coughs> Today we have with us Mr. Imtiaz Anis. Um, interestingly, he was born on the day of Christmas in 1970. He is an Indian equestrian. He competed and represented India in the Sydney Olympics in the individual eventing event. trainer educator competitor and qualified equestrian australia level 2 instructor and coach educator with an equine business degree imtiaz has managed and coached several international young rider teams in dressage show jumping and eventing he has pioneered international study tours all over the world including the us australia and new zealand giving his students international exposure he has recently penned his moving journey in his memoir riding free my olympic journey which hit the stands recently and was published by harper collins the book shows how an equestrian develops and nurtures a deep connection with his horses and how vital the role of a mentor is in equestrian sports so i'm sure this will be an interesting afternoon where we learn something unique and uh, uh, i uh, request all of you please put your hands together and i invite mr santosh anish to please give Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, my story is nothing as compared to Durga's. I really have to uh, congratulate you, and uh, it's really an honor to be in the same room. We need people like this, and that's what this whole world is about. That's the reason, actually, to start off from that, because that's the reason I wrote my book as well. Because it's about making a difference. That's what life is all about. That's why we're here. There's no point getting up every morning and doing the same thing what everybody else does. And uh, well. I had something totally different. Ever since I was six years old, I had only one dream of representing India. I I didn't even know in which sport when I was I, I was that young, you know, because I just wanted to represent India. For me, it was a pride to wear that Indian blazer, blazer, and see that Indian flag. Uh, I used to write victory speeches, and I used to, you know, whenever I went anywhere, even at that young age, I still remember I was eight or nine years old. And if anybody was nice to me or anybody helped me, I would make a note of their name because, and you know, my parents would ask me, "What's the reason?" I said, "No, because when I." do represent india i must remember all these people you know? uh, these will be my victory speech so uh, that's how i i should uh, think about these things so most people sang songs in their bathroom uh, i didn't sing songs i actually wrote speeches and talked you know i used to keep on talking I, as you can you will hear as uh, today i do like talking so uh, i did talk a lot and that's how i used to uh, think as time went by you know i was always uh, uh, the dream still stayed on and i was very fortunate uh you know it's a long story and you got to read the book for it but uh i was very fortunate in my career that at the age of 11 i actually found my passion and i found my coach uh who was an expat who was posted to india 
and it's about relationships about having good mentors having people who can guide you and help you in achieving your goals and you know what's quite interesting i'm going to jump a little bit but from 11 to 30 for 20 years i trained with the same coach and she took me to the olympic games without any exchange of money there was nothing there was no there was no reason for her it was just because she found that passion in me that desire in me that she wanted to be a part of it and it was also what my family what the country india did how it treated her as well she was so lo loving and so grateful for india that she felt that this was a gift for her so it's about having people come into your lives at different different stages uh, in order to achieve your goal so you know in today's day and age i think one of the biggest things i have to talk to a lot of younger generation is having mentors you know when you're in school and college you have your teachers you have your professors as you grow older you need people all the time and that's why an organization like this is absolutely perfect because that's what this organization is about it's about fellowship it's about helping people not only about financial gain or not only about fame but also to achieve what they want to or, or, or when you're in a pathway not to know whether you're going to go right or whether you're going to go left both may be right but you just need that help you need that advice and throughout my career i had just amazing mentors who just came into my life just like as as you just said you know like like angels i didn't even know who they were where they were at, at every point of time, I was in a, at a place where I thought, oh, I, I cannot, there's a wall, I cannot climb it. And somebody came, gave me help, literally picked me up, put me over the wall, and, I, and then I was on again. I ran to the next wall came. And as soon as the next wall came, there were other people that came into my life. So that's the beauty about what this whole story is about, this whole life that we live. It's about value adding, it's about giving back, it's about putting back into society what what, what we've taken out of society every day, you know. And uh, like I tell, I keep saying it because I keep telling, I, I have a riding school now and I train kids and I keep telling them the same thing. It's about how you carry your life is how people get attracted to it. So it's very easy to say, well, you know, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough resources. You will never have enough money. You will never have enough time and you'll never have enough resources. That I can assure you. So you got to make the most of it when it is. You got to take on, take charge, set yourself those goals and go, go for it. So I was really lucky uh, when I was, uh, uh, I think I was about 24 years old, I was selected to uh, represent India at the Asian Games. I was the first civilian ever to be represented and it was, you know, I was so excited. It was like a dream of mine ever since I was young and actually to get to the Asian Games, you know, for, 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 uh, for anybody is always a big feat. But for me, being a civilian was very hard and they had trials in all different, different parts of India, made it even more difficult. So it was not only they had Delhi, Bareilly, Jaipur, Jalandhar. And then all army, everybody was in the army except for me. So they made it even more difficult and they put a trial in Bihar. Budh Gaya, I'm not even sure when most of you may have heard of that place, you know. And that was where one of the trials was. So to reach there, get my horse there, actually do the trials. But it didn't deter me. If there was a will, there's a way. You figure it out. There are people who help you. I took trucks, I took trains, I unreal compartments. I don't think my parents even knew what I was going through in order for me to achieve my goal. But I did it. So when people look at things like that, you have to realize that hard work is something that is, has to be there. You cannot achieve anything in your life uh, without hard work. The other day I, I read a saying and it was quite a lovely saying that, you know, I want to make all the money in the world. And people say that, well, it's not about making all the money in the world. It's about achieving something in your life. Have you value added onto society? Have you value added onto the people next to you? It's not about doing such big things always, even the little things that, that make that difference. The first Asian game was in 1994 and I was selected. And the night before the Asian games, so the team was selected, I was wearing my India blazer. I was so excited that I'm going to actually represent India. And the morning when the team was announced in the Times of India, my name was not on it. They had removed my name. I was shattered, absolutely shattered. I could imagine, I was only 21 years old, which, you know, is, a, is old, but not old in our sport, because in our sport, uh, you know, you've got to be 30 plus literally, but it, it all, the whole, my whole world came to an end in one shot. And politics, bureaucracy, whatever you may call it, I'm not going to get into that. I don't get into it in my book either. It was just earth shattering. It was just something I couldn't even get out of bed. And my parents came to me that day and they asked me, what is it that you want? And I said, to represent India. And they only gave one answer, get back in the saddle.
So this is the kind of support that we need from everybody around. Nobody says, well, you know, you've already done your best. You've done all your trials. You've actually have made it. You're still wearing the India jacket. You've traveled the whole of the country. No, 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 that was not the point. The point was, this is your goal. You have set it. Things like this happen. This is life. You can sit here and cry about it and say, well, it's me. I don't have the right place. I'm not the right opportunity. I don't have the right money. Or you can get up and get it done. So this is what I really am a firm believer on and I did and I was fortunate enough in 1998 I got to the Asian Games again and I won a, I won a medal for India but it didn't end for me there. You know that was not enough. I want to go, wanted to go to the Olympics and you know my parents thought the Olympic Games are you serious? There is no equestrian who has gone to the Olympic Games and you're a civilian. Where are you going to do this? There's no qualifying event in India. I said the Olympic Games is in three years in Australia. This is where I'm going to base myself and I will, I will go there. Parents say, well, if this is what you want to do, well, we'll support you. You figured it out. So I moved base, left friends, family. I didn't know anyone. And I went, to, I found a stable that I could train and work at. I slept in a stable. I worked every day, 20 hours every day, cleaning stalls, mucking stalls, washing horses, just to get that riding lesson, just to learn. It was not easy at all. It broke me every day. And every time my parents would call, they would ask, you know, how's it going? I'm oh, fantastic, wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm training every day. Just, I just love it. Little did they know, they had no idea what I was going through. There again, a huge wall came. I was not getting anywhere. I couldn't get achieve my goal. It was just struggling. And the family, just an Australian family saw me. And they saw me how hard I worked, how dedicated I was, how sincere I was in my goal. And they said, this is not a program for you. Come and stay at our house. I lived with that family for three years. I don't even know, <laughs> they didn't even know who, who I was or where we formed, but opened their home out to me. Their kids became like family to me. And I trained for, in, at, with them at their place for the 2000 Olympic Games. So bar there are no barriers when it comes to things like this, which you really want, where your heart is in the right place and you're sincere about. That is the most important thing which I tell these kids today. If you are sincere, if you're coming from the right place, you don't have a vested interest or another game plan, people will come together, people will help you, and you will achieve what you have to achieve. And I was fortunate enough that in 2000, I, I represented India at the, at the Olympic Games. After that, I was fortunate enough again to go to the World Championships and continue this and make a career out of this. So that's my basic crux of my story. This is the reason I wrote my book was to tell people about getting out of their comfort zones. Don't do what everybody else does. You know, even when you look at kids today, they go to classes because it's convenient. The carpool is going there. You know, their friends are there. That's what everybody else is doing. No, that's not the way we're supposed to live our lives. We're supposed to live our lives in what we want. And when we have to go and get it, there's going to be discomforts. And the one thing I can assure you, there's going to be failure. 100% you are going to fail. I cannot guarantee you being successful, but you are going to fail in whatever you try. But it's about overcoming those failures. And you learn through those, uh, through those experiences. But achieving something that is just a little bit more than the norm is what's important in life. So I really thank you so much for having me on this podium. Uh, it's a very special for me to be here as well because as the book starts off with really someone who was very close to me and who I always modeled my life on was my grandfather. And he was a very, very, uh, how, how would I put it, uh, a Rotarian to another level. <laughs> in fact, when he was, he wanted to become. Uh, he was going to be. He was nominated to be the president. My grandmother and him were fights at home, you know, of not being because, he, because already it was his life. And he said, now, now if you become a pre the president, then you will, you will not come home at all. So he, he loved Rotary more than anything else. He, as my grandmother would say, definitely more than her. So it really means so much to me to be here today in honor of him as well. I mean, he would be extremely proud that I actually am here on on. on um, and talking to all the Rotarians all, uh, at this club. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to make you a Rotarian. <laughs> no, and you, yeah, you need to be come and join our club. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So uh, would you take some questions? Yes, sure, definitely. Yeah. Anybody? I have a question. Yes. I want to understand what you're doing today. Uh, what exactly have you started and what are you doing today? So, uh, again, with situations, things like this happen. I was in Australia, I was training the young riders of, in, of the Australian team. And due to COVID, I came back to India. And then I realized this is the time for me to give back. It's not about, you know, I've already achieved what I had to achieve. I ha I've already got 
all all the uh, I mean all my I ticked all my boxes. So I started a riding school. It's not really a riding school. It's an equestrian training program to train young young riders to go overseas again and to train and represent India. So that's one part of it. But as you said, in any business, you have to have different facets. So we have a riding school where we teach kids how to ride. We teach people how to deal with animals because a lot of kids, you know, it's so different from any other sport because every other sport, once the game is over, you put it in a cricket, electric cricket or tennis, you put it in your bag and you forget about it. Here, you've got a horse. It's the only sport of the Olympic Games where an animal is involved. So you have to look after the horse. So we teach them the whole equine management part of how to care for them, feed them, look after them. So it's a huge uh, level of uh, satisfaction as well that takes place. And my whole goal is, is a residential school. So kids come, it's any walks of life and it's not about the money. Whether they have money, don't have money, I don't believe in that. I believe in if you've got the desire and you've got that thing to actually do it, please come. Please come to the place and it's all and it's a school that we teach you all aspects and then place them overseas or internationally to get uh, to pursue their careers in this field. And have you uh, tied up with the Olympics or the you know the games or something as a kind of feeder? So unfortunately we cannot be an Olympic or, or games feeder because we have no qualifying events in India. The level is so high that India doesn't even feature in it. So I, I mean just to say I chose a sport like equestrian which is a bit like you know if you've seen the movie Cool Runnings. You know it's like the Africans deciding that they're going to go bobsledging you know. <laughs> There's no snow in Africa and they want to go bobsledging. So for me I chose I, I, even, even, even crazier not only go to the Olympics but go in a sport that they, doesn't exist in India. Equestrian 3D eventing at that level does not exist in India and I still said this is my sport and I'm going to do it. So there's no bars. There's no, if you want to do something, you, you will find a way to do it. You will find people to help you do it. But it's about your attitude and your discipline, your, de your determination and your dedication that other people see and that's how they help. And that's what the school is about. Is really, I spend a lot of time with my kids on that. It's not only just the riding. Riding anybody can teach you. It's off the horse. Management, uh, discipline, uh, you know, it's all structured. So you don't have any connection with the amateur riders clubbing? No, I mean I was uh, in, at, at the, I, I, that's where I started riding, but it's a different different club system. You know, that's a, that's a riding club that's based in Bombay, and that's where I started riding as well. So it's uh, just different, yes. But a lot of amateur riders club members come to my school as well. Okay, and your school is not it, it's uh, out of Bombay. Yes, right? it's about three hours away from Bombay in a small small fishing village called Nargol, which is actually the town near Sanjan. Uh, if people need to know about it, it's actually where the Parsis first landed in India. Uh, so it's a very small fishing village. We're right on the beach. It's extremely beautiful, very peaceful. Uh, the kids, uh, parents like it more than the kids because there's no Wi-Fi. <laughs> no, no, the Wi-Fi is not very good. So there's not many electronics. They're actually outdoors with their with their animals. So how do you advertise about how you how can people through, join? Through Facebook, Main, mainly Instagram and Facebook. Now there's social media is the way to go. So you can go to my Facebook page, which is Imtiaz Anis, or you can do Instagram, which is Imtiaz Anis. So if any of the members are there, please follow me. It's wonderful because there are a lot of educational videos, but there are lots of great videos on it to show people what what the sport is about. And you do also dressage. Yes, dressage, show jumping, and cross country. Because my daughter's mother-in-law is very much into dressage. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So great. Any more questions? Yeah. Thank you, Mithya. This was wonderful to hear you. Absolutely inspiring story. My question is, you know, like in the F1, when you're talking about the kind of cars that that drivers drive, and a lot of success depends on the cars. Is there any link in the breed of horses and the kind of horses that you are that we get in India or or at least locally so to say available in terms of performance and how how do you how do you compete in a global space where the the breed of horses is face superior than possibly we see in India. This is just a guess. Maybe I'm wrong. No, no, you're, you're, it's you're half right, half wrong. Uh, in the way that, yes, you do need to have the, uh, the quality in the horses. But that quality in horses is in India as well. So the thoroughbred industry has already brought in those good quality horses. But we have to train them. So that's where we lack is again coming back to education. This is why I think it's so important. I keep going back to Durga store because it's so important in anything that we do in life. Without education, we have nothing. Everybody has to understand that. So until we, even in any sport that you do, the technicality, uh, the technical side has grown so much that without that, you have nothing. So until people go overseas, learn, educate themselves. I actually did an equine course, equine horseman. I did an MBA in equine management. 
you know so that's the kind of level of knowledge that you need in order to train these horses look after these horses the nutrition that's involved in these horses so now with the sport has grown even on all the top breeds that are there in england like the warm bloods or the dutch breed horses or the germans which they've been imported to india so those horses are now in india as well so you know it's all about what what's available and what's not available so we have we have world class uh, so to say breeds of horses we yes we do we we have the horses we with the problem we don't have is the is the lack of education so the training the grounds the facilities you know that's where we are really have to uh, imp uh, that's why it's easier for the riders to go overseas than for the, for for the setting up that infrastructure here which is so hard thank you thank you uh, i think you have a question Since you've been uh, with horses from a young age, uh, do you feel there has been an exchange of energy between the horse and you? Absolutely. I, I think that's one of the wonderful questions, and you know I'm going to divert a little bit on it because the reason I, people, uh, I, there was an eight-year-old boy who read my book. Uh, that's something again about the book. I wrote it in such a way that even a ten-year-old can read it, and parents can also read it because I want the younger generation to read it. That it's about you know living their dream, following their passion rather than just doing what what the norm is. You know, uh, and I, and he asked me. He said, "How do you remember everything? How do you remember the whole book? I mean, there's not a single thing that you missed." And the thing that I remember were my horses. Because to me, that was far more important than anything in my life, is the connection I had with my horses, the relationship I had with each one. Each one was different. And each one came into my life at a specific time, and we had that relationship and that bond for us to go to that level, because that's how you achieve everything. So coming back to your question again, is that you know, when you look at the breeds or the types, it's not only about the breed or the type, it's about that match that happens, that connection that happens between you all, that you can achieve more success, you know? So it's a bit like when you go to school also, people say, what's your favorite subject, maths? 50% of those people, it's the maths teacher, that's, the, that's why the maths is the favorite, you know? It's the way they're taught, you know, so it's, it's to do with that as well, you know, it's how your relationship with people are and your relationship with your horses that you can achieve the goals that you want to achieve. Okay, that brings me to the next question, yes. which is that you said that people have come into your life at different times yes. and you needed them most. Uh, is that also a kind of exchange of energy? Well, I, I, you know, it's a hard one to say because I'm not, you know, I'm not into the, uh, the uh, like whether it's energy or what, but it's, I think it's the vibes that you give, the vibes that you put up, the attitude that you have. You know, when you go into a situation, I'll give you an example and I keep diversifying because these are small, small stories that come out in my way. I didn't have the money to buy the top Olympic horses and I didn't have the money to train with the top riders. But one thing I did have was the time and the dedication that I definitely had and the, and the work ethic. That was something that was instilled in me ever since I went to boarding school. So, you know, I was up at 5 o'clock every morning. Even now, I'm up at 5.45 every single morning. I ride at least two to three horses every day, even at my age, you know, and I'm not young. <laughs> uh, so, it, I'm still riding a lot. I teach the whole day. That's, that's my passion. So every day I would go, whenever there was a competition, I would go to that competition and watch the warm up. And whenever those riders would drop a jump or drop a fence, I would run and put the fence up. And nothing, just stand on the side. Drum, drop, jump would fall, I would put it up. Jump would fall, I would put it up. And I, I did this for, every, I don't know how many shows. And one day a, a, a rider came and he said, boy, you ride? I said, yeah, I ride. He said, oh, come to my farm. We're looking for, I, I'm short on riders. I need someone to ride my horses. I said, are you serious? He said, yeah, come in the morning and come and ride my horse. So I went there. The next morning, I was there on time, right clothes, right thing. Show, the first thing in life, show up and be on time. That's the most important thing I tell people everywhere. When I have a lesson at 6 o'clock, if you come at 5 to 6, you're already late. If you come at 5 to 6, you are late for a meeting. You should be well in time with the right clothes, with the right papers, with the right file, 10 minutes before you're supposed to be there. If you have a lesson with me, warmed up, ready, in the ring, before I come. I'm never late. So I don't expect my trainer, coach, uh, students to be late. So the same concept. He saw that, that this, I was always on time, I was always dressed well, I was always turned out correctly, I was polite. And so through that, he gave me more and more horses. Then eventually I got horses to ride, compete, jump. And I went to my first competition and it was one of his horses, which was just, he just gave it to me free. Because of the way I looked after his horses, the way I looked after his time. So it's about those sort of things. Those are things when I say people come into your life. But it's also because I showed up on time, because I was there helpful, because I did my job, he did. Other people see that. Also your goal and your patience, passion attracts it. Yes. <laughs>
No, thank you, thank you. I mean, you have to That's be. You gotta live up, you get up every morning with a passion. You gotta get up every morning with a goal. Whatever it could be, it doesn't have to be Olympics. It doesn't have to be sport. It doesn't have to be making a million dollars or driving a Mercedes car. It could be helping people. It could be being a chef, being elected, whatever field that you want to be. But you gotta get up in the morning with a little bit of oomph and say, "This is what I want. This is what I'm gonna get." And I'm gonna run, and, and run. You know, be an energetic. Even for now, when I teach kids and they come and they come into the class. Oh, six o'clock <laughs> then that's the kind of lesson you get but if you come in at 5 30 sir what can we do today can we jump this can we do this sir, can we try this sir, can we try that then that's the energy you'll get from me because you get you're, you're putting out that energy so that's the energy you'll get from the outside so it's all about that that make that's what life is all about but you see look at the youngsters today half of them are slack they're getting late i mean that's my first thing and they come to my school I, I walk into the room and they haven't made their bed i say you're not getting a writing lesson today make your bed first thing uh, we don't make a bed at home. I say, well, this is not home. <laughs> First thing, you have to learn that. Make your bed, have your breakfast, eat. Nutrition, another big problem with the younger generation today. They just don't eat correctly. I mean, how are you going to re achieve anything in your life? It doesn't really matter. Eat well, sleep early. You know, these are things which, when you look at successful people, look at successful businessmen, forget about sport. Successful businessmen, they're not successful because of, they're successful because of their mindset. They're successful because of the way they work. They work ethic. That these are the things that we have to inculcate in our in our generation today. Not two plus two or school or, or what the book teaches you. Those things you're anyway going to learn. And nowadays there's Google, so you don't even need to. You can Google everything. But it's these sort of basic things of actually dressing. Uh, you go to a meeting and people are coming scrambling in the paper, and then somebody says, uh, "Do you have this paper?" Oh, sorry, sir, I just forgot it. I just go and get the paper. Uh, it's too late. Should have had it with you. Think, plan the night before. Pack the day before. Have everything lined up before. It's all about planning, organizing, things like that. Sorry, got a bit disturbed. <laughs> Thank you, Nikias. I see your mother beaming. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether she's, Rashida, whether she's. How much of his, uh, you know, discipline was from you? All of it? <laughs> no. Yes, he was always a disciplined. Sorry, he was always a disciplined person. Even as a child, he was uh, very good at it. And I think uh, sending him to boarding school, uh, much against my wishes and the tears that I shed when we sent him, I think has made a man out of him. I think the boarding school has really helped him get disciplined and focused on what he wanted to do in life. And I must say, my husband and I encouraged him from the age of six to do what he wanted and we always supported him. So I think the combination of that has really helped him be us to achieve what he wanted. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to say one thing because I think it's important for those hearing because you know, parent pr pr helping support as parents and uh, it, they're, they're different kinds of it. So I gave a talk with uh, Aparna. Uh, she's a badminton player, nine time uh, yeah. champion. I mean, you cannot get uh, in more medals than, uh, than uh, huh? sorry, Aparna Popat, right? I mean, amazing, amazing. And she put this story, she said her parents were, you know, took her to the court every single day, but they never in a whole career ever told her how to hold the racket, move your feet, do this, do that, uh, sideline, no, that's the coach's job. Her, their job was to make sure she eats on time, she sleeps on time, does her homework and take her to the court. That is support. So this is where parents also get a bit caught up at trying to get involved in everything about, no, there are people who do that. So this is really important and also change. She came from an, I'm just taking her story so that people realize they're different different stories. She's an absolute vegetarian. And she went to her first junior national championship. It was in Copenhagen or some Swedish country. And there was no veg food. So she ate donuts and competed at that national, at that event. When she came back, the coach said, either you eat or you, or you stop training. And her parents, she came back and she told her parents that. Her parents said, from tomorrow morning, tell them to start six boiled eggs. The coach would bring it. She would eat at the court, not at home. In fact, she had a younger sister and she said, what about me? She said, you don't play badminton, you would be eating vegetarian. <laughs> there would be vegetarian food cooked for you every day. So that is the support that I also got from my parents. They made sure the, the facilitation was made because I ran so hard. So whether it was getting where I had to get on time, those sort of things would still happen. There was never a delay. My mom would be out. There were socialites in Bombay. They would come home at even three in the morning, four in the morning. But if I had, I had to be taken five thirty to the race car in the morning. If I was up, I woke up my mom. I was taken. There was no questions asked. So that is what it what it takes.
Honorary Secretary Dr. Akshay Batra to propose a vote of thanks. Thank you so much, Durga Ji, and thank you so much, uh, Mr. Anis, for such a wonderful afternoon. I think this has been one of the best talks that I've attended in a long time. So inspirational. Uh, I have two requests for you. One is that we'd love to see you move from the podium into our members' roster, as suggested by President Shainaz. And secondly, perhaps from Instagram to Netflix, I think would make a wonderful story to watch as well. So we hope to see that someday. And as a token of, uh, of appreciation for the afternoon spent with our members, we will on your behalf plant 10 fruit-bearing trees at Nilmati Dandwal Gram Panchayat Maharashtra. May I request President Shainaz to please hand over the certificate. Yeah, there's a lot of books also if anybody's... Yeah.